Hey everyone, it's Elizabeth from Little Home and Harvest, and today I'm going to share with you what me and my family eat in a week. I'm filming dinners for you guys, and I'm going to show you the whole food recipes that I love to make at home. It's really easy. I like to keep meat stocked in my freezer, so I just pull some meat out and then basically cook whatever vegetables or rice and whole grains that I have along with it and just throw a meal together at the last minute. I'm not a big meal planner. I like to just cook what sounds good in that day. I'm a mom of three kids, so we're a family of five. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the things that we really enjoy eating and I hope that you'll subscribe if you like these kind of videos Today's the first night and it's Sunday night and tonight I'm gonna make steak and potatoes Which is just a really simple meal, but there's something so hearty and delicious about just good beef and potatoes So I'm gonna try to do some like garlic potatoes Which are some of my favorite kind like crispy garlic potatoes And then I'm also gonna do some steak that I just pulled out of the freezer this morning So hopefully they're thawed and I'm gonna throw those in the cast iron skillet with a bunch of butter And I'm pretty sure this is a meal that everyone is gonna love tonight. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. I started by lining my baking sheet with parchment paper for easy cleanup and then I went ahead and seasoned my whole baby potatoes with olive oil, minced garlic, and salt and pepper and I rubbed it all over and then roasted them in the oven at 400 degrees for roughly 30 minutes. After those were in, I went ahead and started preheating my cast iron skillet and added a little bit of ghee in there just to make sure it was gonna be non-stick. And while that was heating up, I started on my easy homemade ranch. Equal parts mayo, sour cream, and buttermilk. And then I added a bit of minced garlic or garlic powder salt, pepper, and a small dash of Worcestershire sauce for good measure. And then just stir it all up and your ranch is ready to go. So once my cast iron skillet was heated up, I went ahead and started to season my steaks. I like to season them on both sides with a mixture of salt, pepper, and garlic powder, which is a standard seasoning in my home. It makes everything taste good and doesn't add any weird flavors. My husband doesn't like herbs <laughs> or anything like thyme or rosemary on good meat, so I didn't want to ruin it that night. So I just kept it simple with our salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I went ahead and added some olive oil and butter and seared my steaks until they had a perfect brown steakhouse style crust. You want to make sure your pan is really hot because we're just getting a really nice sear on this. And after those are perfectly browned, then I pop them in the oven to finish cooking them to our preferred temperature, which to make them kid friendly is not very red and bloody. <laughs> Once the potatoes are done, I drizzled them with steak drippings that were in my skillet still and just tossed it all together and that gives them a really special flavor that I absolutely love. And then I went ahead and sliced up all my steak into thin bites so that I didn't have to worry about serving knives to everyone at dinner. It just makes it so much easier, especially with the kids. So I went ahead and sliced it all up and then I served it with a steakhouse style salad with a mixture of greens, some sharp shredded cheddar cheese, my homemade ranch, and served it with my sliced up steak and garlic potatoes. So for dinner tonight, I'm going to be making a chipotle style whole roast chicken. So I basically season it like the chipotle chicken and then I'm going to bake the whole thing in the oven. And when it's done, I kind of pull it apart and we're going to use that to put it over rice with avocado, salsa, sour cream, and shredded cheese on top. And this is a meal we really liked the last time we made it. So hopefully we like it again this time. We'll see, you know how it is with kids. All right, so I started by seasoning my whole chicken with chili powder, cumin, garlic, oregano, olive oil, and salt and pepper. And then I rubbed it all around and added a fourth a cup of water to the bottom of it so it would steam and keep it really moist and roasted it covered in my Dutch oven for about an hour on 425 degrees. 
and then you shred it up. While that was roasting, I made jasmine rice, and I like to throw in a bay leaf too for a little bit of depth of flavor. It's just a little more fancy than plain rice. And when everything was done, I drizzled the chicken drippings into the rice. So that kind of gives you like a chicken flavored rice, and it's so good. I don't let any of the pan drippings go to waste. <laughs> And then I serve it up with cheddar, salsa, sour cream, avocado, and jalapeno if you like a kick. Tonight I'm going to be making a sourdough barbecue chicken pizza in the oven. I like to use sourdough because I kind of have a gluten intolerance sensitivity thing going on. So I like to use my sourdough starter to make the crust. I've seen this done a million times and I've tried it several times now and my family loves it. I love it. My kids love it. Everything. It's so good and so easy. I'm going to do two of those. One in a bigger cast iron and one in a smaller one. And on the smaller pizza I'm going to put jalapenos too. Well, I've already got my oven preheated to 450 right now and my cast iron skillets are both in there getting super super hot so while that happens I'm gonna go ahead and start on my toppings so I started by slicing up some Vidalia onion really thinly and then I shredded up some whole milk mozzarella cheese and I also used my leftover chipotle chicken that was already shredded from last night's dinner Okay, so while my daughter grades that cheese, I'm gonna tell you about the sourdough starter that I got fed earlier. So around like breakfast time today, I went ahead and I fed my starter. So I just added my flour and water and mixed it up. And then that sat out on my stove for pretty much all day. And it's about 5.15 right now, and I'm just about to make dinner. So it's been sitting out for a good while. So it's active and bubbly and ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when you have a fed starter that's ready to be used. see this is nice and bubbly and ready to be used for the perfect crust so those skillets are almost done preheating and once I get them out I'm gonna go ahead and swirl my sourdough starter all around and go up the edges a little bit and not too thick kind of like a thin layer but you can do it a little bit thicker if you like thicker crust and then we're gonna season that a little bit and pop it back into the oven for about 10 10 ish minutes and get it a little bit crispy then we're gonna add our toppings. So once my cast iron skillets were really hot, I took a few heaping scoops of sourdough starter and spread it all around and up the sides. You wanna make sure you go a little bit higher up the sides than you think you need to because it kind of settles down and then you won't have much of a crust. So make sure you get all the way up so you have some edge. Then I like to season my homemade crust with olive oil, salt, and garlic powder. And I pop it in the oven for about 13 minutes or so to crisp up before we put the toppings on. Now we're gonna go ahead and slather on your favorite barbecue sauce until your heart's content. Then we're gonna add our shredded chicken, cheese, and onion, and basically anything else that sounds good to you. Do whatever you want, this is your pizza. Bake it for about 15 minutes, and you just saved yourself a delivery tip. So dinner night four was poor man's potato soup. It's basically what I like to call it. This is the kind of meal I make when I'm out of groceries, and I really want to eat out, but the thought of spending another $25 on food is pretty much just too much of a heartache when I know I can make this soup for five dollars. So I gather all my hidden potatoes I have in my vegetable drawer along with onion and celery and I chop it all up and I throw it in the instant pot with some olive oil and saute it for about five minutes. While the onion and garlic are sauteing I like to go ahead and peel and slice up my potatoes into little chunks and then I'll throw everything in the instant pot including some more butter and salt, pepper, and vegetable base. You could also do chicken base, but whatever you have works. Then I add some water to cover, and I'll pressure cook it on soup mode for about 15 minutes. Thank you. 
If you have bacon laying around, go ahead and cook that up too. I baked mine in the oven at 375 for about 20 minutes until it was nice and crispy. Now that the Instant Pot is done doing its job, I take some of the potatoes out and I smash them up and then I add them back to the pot. And this just kind of helps give you that potato soup texture. I took some of the liquid out and stirred in some einkorn flour, frozen peas that I had in the freezer. I added some heavy cream for good measure, plenty of salt and pepper, and topped it with the bacon. And you'd be shocked that you don't even feel that broke right now. So I mixed that all up and let that rise for a while and then I went ahead and sprinkled some flour on my cutting board and started to roll out my dough and shape them into hamburger buns. I actually started by making about six buns and then they started to rise for a few minutes and I realized that wow these were going to be huge so I actually ended up re-rolling them to make them smaller because after they had risen they were plenty big and they turned out perfectly. I'll have to share this recipe with you guys. I loved it. After I rolled the buns, I just made a, a quick egg wash and I cracked in one egg and some water and then mixed that up and I couldn't even find my basting brush because my kids had probably played with it with Play-Doh, so I used my fingers to rub the egg wash on top of the rolls. And don't worry, I wash my hands all the time. Alright, so tonight's dinner is going to be some homemade cheeseburgers and for that I made sourdough like yeast. My kids are yelling. I, I made, or no, this morning I made sourdough like yeast rolls and those turned out really, really good. So I have them over here ready to go for dinner. I mean, how amazing. I'm so excited to have these. And I made them with einkorn flour too. So they're like all the good stuff right here. We're so excited for those. The kids already ate one earlier for a snack. Cheeseburgers, fries, all goodness, organic, local meat. So this is a really healthy version of cheeseburger and fries. So that night I started by washing and drying some russet potatoes and I just cut them up into like steaks, steak fry size. <laughs> That's hard to say. Steak fry size. <laughs> and got them all on a parchment lined baking sheet and put a whole bunch of the olive oil on them and tossed that up. And then I popped these into the oven and baked them at 425 for about 30 minutes. And then while those were cooking, I got my hamburgers ready to go. So I started by dividing my one pound of ground beef into six burger patties and I smashed them as thinly as I can get them because when you cook them, they kind of pull back together and they'll get thicker. So you want to just smash them as best you can. Just smash those babies. And then I sprinkled, of course, salt, pepper, and garlic powder because that's pretty much my favorite seasoning. And I went ahead and put those in a really hot skillet and seared them off on both sides and cooked them until they were plenty cooked through for us. And then after that, I topped them with a slice of thick cut white cheddar cheese. And so our burgers were ready to go. So load up your bun and you're done. Healthy whole food dinner number five is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed these healthy whole food dinner ideas and don't forget to leave a comment down below telling me which idea was your favorite. You can also check out my website littlehomeandharvest.com for the full written recipes with pictures and everything you need to know to make these easy whole food dinners. Bye guys!